Hello, and welcome to our first little online lecture um, for German 2311. Um, as you know, when I teach you new grammar, I always say that you have to connect it with what you already know. So today we're going to go over some of the cases we already studied in chapters 1 and 2 for the nominative and chapter 3, the accusative. If you need to review, that's where you'll find them. Chapters 1 and 2 for the nominative and chapter 3 and uh, 5, I believe, for the accusative case. So let's start there first. Um, I hope you remember that we said the no nominative case is the subject case. So we need it for the, the, whenever we use the subject, we use the nominative. And the der words and then R-E-S-E, -E, der, die, das, die. Or any other der word. It could be dieser, diese, dieses, diese, or welche, welche, welches, welche. And um, this only um, goes for the their words, the ein words. I hope you remember just ein, eine, ein, kein, keine, kein. And again, it's for the subject. The accusative, then we added on and we said it's the direct object um, of the sentence, and the only thing that changes is the masculine. So when you have a direct object, uh, the masculine becomes den instead of der or diesen. The question words also change to wen, welchen, and the ein words too, einen, meinen, keinen, everything else still stays the same. And um, again, you have to know what a direct object is, but if you don't know it, you need to review on your own. Um, and also we talked about the accusative being used after certain prepositions. Uh, um, ohne, durch, für, gegen, those five. So review all that before you even start with this new lecture because we're going to talk about another case, a third case, but it doesn't make any sense to learn it if you don't remember what you studied before. So today we're going to talk about the dative case. The dative case, well, we have subject, direct object, and now indirect object. The dative is used for the indirect object of the sentence. And the endings for the dear words are going to be dem or diesem or um, jedem, er, der, dieser, um, and then, whoops, sorry, no. I just write the M. I'll tell you why in a little bit. The uh, neutral uh, gender is going to have the same uh, endings as the masculine. And for the plural, we're going to have EN. So you can simply remember, that's why I wanted just the M there, Reesey, Neesey, Merman. If you just remember those endings, Reesey, Neesey, Merman, you know the endings to all the dear words in the three cases we studied so far, or that we're studying now. Um, again, this applies to the their words, not the ein words. Um, and then, just remember, this is the subject case. This one is the direct object. And then now the indirect object. This part, so far, is fairly easy. But the difficult part is knowing the difference between a direct object and an indirect object. That's where the problem starts. We are on page 236 of our German Treffpunkt Deutsch book, um, Seite 236. Und wir schauen uns uh, die Beispiele an. Die ersten Beispiele hier sind zum Beispiel Klaus möchte einen Heimtrainer. Klaus ist unser uh, Subjekt, Nominativ, möchte das Verb einen Heimtrainer is das Objekt, das direkte Objekt. That's why it's got that N ending, einen Heimtrainer, der Heimtrainer, ja. Brigitte kauft ihrem Mann einen Heimtrainer. Also hier das zweite Beispiel hat das direkte Objekt, einen Heimtrainer, und dann noch das indirekte Objekt, ihrem Mann. So in that second example you have the uh, accusative direct object, einen Heimtrainer, and ihrem Mann, instead of ihr Mann, her husband, it's ihrem. That M is added there because it's dative, because it's the indirect object of the sentence. So usually, I don't know if you know 
if you remember your grammar, but the subject, of course, is uh, the one doing the action of the verb. In this case, uh, Kaufen, who is buying something. Uh, Brigitte is buying something, so that's the subject. What is she buying? That's a direct object. Einen Heimtrainer. And who is she buying it for or to? The, the indirect object answers the, the question to whom or for whom, basically. Ihre Mann, that's our indirect object. Und uh, dann haben wir noch ein Beispiel. Sie schenkt ihrem Mann den Heimtrainer zum Geburtstag. Again, sie, Brigitte, uh, nominativ, schenkt das Verb ihrem Mann, to whom, for whom, who is she giving it to, her husband, that's the dative indirect object, den Heimtrainer, what is she giving him, direct object, accusative, okay? And, uh, and here this chart, once again, is just showing you what we have here, the Reesey Nisi Merman. So let's move to the next page, Seite 237, Aufgabe 13, ein bisschen grammatik. And uh, we'll look at a few sentences here and kind of analyze them. We'll, we'll look at uh, the subject, direct object, and indirect object together. Here, der erste Satz. Stephanie feiert dieses Jahr Weihnachten nicht zu Hause in Chicago, sondern in München. So again, the subject, nominative, fairly easy, Stephanie. Because who is celebrating? Feiern, to celebrate. Stephanie is celebrating. So Stephanie, subject. Feiert dieses Jahr. Dieses Jahr is not an object. I hope you remember that's just an expression of time. It is an expression of time used with the accusative case. Jahr, das Jahr, dieses Jahr. But if it was um, a Monat, which is masculine, it would be diesen Monat with the accusative ending. Um, and then zu Hause in Chicago are prepositional phrases. So again, don't confuse prepositional phrases, expressions of time with the direct object or indirect object. It's something you need to keep apart. The only object here is what she's celebrating. What is she celebrating? Weihnachten, Christmas. So that's the direct object, Weihnachten. The next part of the sentence I wrote on the board. Sie schickt deshalb ihrer Familie ein großes Paket. So let's take a look at this one. Sie schickt, again, sie is the subject, nominative. This is our verb, uh, to send, schicken. And who is she sending it to? To whom? Indirect object, dative. She's sending it to her family. Family is usually um, feminine, di familia. So it would end in e in the nominative case or the accusative case. But here it ends in r. Why? Because it's dative. To her family. Dative. Ira familia. Sie schickt deshalb ihre familia. That's her indirect object, dative. Ein großes Paket. Now I want you to think about this for just a second. What is this? It's what she's sending. It is the indirect object. Accusative. So, I mean, direct, did I say indirect or direct object? <laughs> it doesn't matter. You can laugh. The, the, the students will laugh with me. But that's the indirect object. This is obviously the direct object. It's what she's sending, okay? So it's a direct object, it's accusative, and there are no changes from nominative to accusative if it's neutral. Ein großes Paket. It's just like the nominative case, uh, because in the accusative case, remember, only the masculine changes. So this is what you would ex expect for nominative or accusative, for neutral, das Paket. Okay? So far, so good. To whom? Indirect object. What is she sending? Direct object. Sie schickt ihrem Großvater ein gutes Buch, ihrem Vater ein schönes Bierglas und ihrer Mutter einen Kalender. It's the same thing all over again. It's always, you know, Stephanie again sending something. Subject is always Stephanie, sie. She's sending stuff, so schicken is still our verb. And it's always she's sending something to a person, to her grandfather. Again, grandfather, masculine, M ending. Reesey, Nisi, Merman. No? So this is our indirect object, ihrem Großvater. And then what is she sending? Ein gutes Buch. 
direct object, accusative. Then she sends something to her father. To her father, ihrem Vater, dative, indirect object, ein schönes Bierglas. This is what she's sending, direct object, accusative. Und ihrer Mutter ends in R, not in E, even though it's feminine, because it's dative. It's to her mother, dative, Risi, Nisi, Merman. That's the er in Merman, feminine dative, okay? So to her mother, ihre Mutter, einen Kalender. And here you see how the accusative changes only when it's masculine. This is just review. You should know this by now. But ein gutes Buch, ein schönes Bierglas, neutral, nothing changes. Masculine, instead of ein Kalender, einen Kalender. Sie schickt ihrer Mutter einen Kalender. Something else you might have noticed by now is that in English you would say she sends a book to her father, uh, to her grandfather, or she sends her grandfather a book. In German, you cannot decide where to put the indirect object like you can in English. Uh, the indirect object goes before the direct object. So the dative goes before the accusative. Sie schickt ihrem Großvater ein gutes Buch. Yeah? There is no option there like there is in English. So now you work on the second one here on your own. Und was schenkt Stephanie ihren Freunden in München? Sie schenkt ihrem Freund Peter ein Sweatshirt, ihrer Mitbewohnerin Claudia ein paar Ohrringe und Claudias Freund Martin eine tolle CD. So this is going to be part of your homework, just a little part of your more homework that's to come later. And do the same thing we did here with that second sentence. Where's the subject? Where's the direct object? Where's the indirect object? Also pay attention to the endings and how they change. So we will do this little exercise together in class when we meet again because you need a partner to do this. So we'll, we'll do this in class uh, when we meet. But we will go on to the um, question words, the interrogative pronoun, if I said that correctly. I don't know how to pronounce that word. But it's the question words in the dative case. Well, we already know that wer is who and wen is whom. So last semester I told you, well, if you know the difference between who and whom, and most of you didn't, uh, you know how to use wer versus wen. Well, guess what? Not only do you have to know the difference between who and whom, but that's just going to tell you when to use wer, who, and when to use one of these. That, that's your whom. In German we have two whoms, wen and wem. Yay. I feel the excitement. It's, yeah, so wer is who. We're looking for the subject. When you ask, wer kommt heute in die Vorlesung? Wer uh, schreibt eine E-Mail? Wer besucht mich? When you ask the question with wer, you're looking for the subject. You want to know who is doing this. We don't know who did the action of the verb. Kommen. Who is coming today? So we're looking for the subject, wer. Good. Then we already covered this last semester. When do you ask a question with wen, whom, one of the two whoms? Well, when we're looking for the direct object. That's why it's got that an ending. In, remember, masculine, accusative. No? So wen besuchst du am Wochenende? Whom are you visiting? You are doing the action, visiting. So we're not looking for the subject. We know the subject. You are visiting someone. But whom are you visiting? Wen besuchst du? We're looking for the direct object. Wen besuchst du am Wochenende? Wen siehst du jede Woche? Whom do you see every week? Oh, I see my teacher every week. So that would be another example of wen. Wen siehst du jede Woche? Another example, uh, wen rufst du an? Whom are you calling? You are making the phone call. I want to know the recipient, the object of your call. Wen rufst du an? But now we have another one, wem. Wem is, you're looking for the indirect object, obviously. And it's closer to, in English, to whom or for whom. Uh, to whom are you giving this book as a gift? Schenken is to give as a gift. Schenken. So, wem schenkst du dieses Buch? 
To whom are you giving that book? To whom, for whom? That's closer to the dative um, indirect object question word beam. Notice the, dif the difference between beam, schenkst du dieses Buch? Here I'm looking for the indirect object. I know who is giving something. That's you. You're the subject. I know what you're giving away, which is the direct object, accusative. I don't know to whom you're giving it. I'm looking for the indirect object. Wem schenkst du dieses Buch? However, if I'm asking, was schenkst du deiner Mutter? Think about it for a second. What am I looking for there? Was schenkst du deiner Mutter? Do we know the subject? Who is giving something? Yeah, we do. It's du, still, you're giving something. Do we know the indirect object, the dative, to whom you're giving this object? Yes, that's why the R ending is there. It's dative, feminine dative. So you're giving something to your mother, deine Mutter, but we don't know what it is that you're giving to her. So we're looking for the direct object here. Was, because we can always ask was oder wie, no? So was schenkst du deiner Mutter? We're looking for the direct object. And the indirect object is here, your mother. Wem schenkst du dieses Buch? We know what you're giving, we know the direct object. We don't know whom you're giving it to, okay? Good, ja? Und ihr habt hier Beispiele natürlich. Wer ist der Mann? Wer ist der Mann? We're looking for the subject, ne? Und wen hat der Hund gebissen? Wen hat der Hund gebissen? The dog bit someone. The dog did the biting. So that's our subject. We have it. We're looking for the object. Whom did he bite? The dog. Obviously not the other way around. Okay, und uh, dann zuletzt, wem schenken Sie den Wein? Wem, so you have um, den Wein, your direct object, and to whom are you giving the wine? That's our indirect object, and we're looking for that. Wem schenken Sie den Wein? Okay, good. So let's practice together a little bit with um, Aufgabe 16, Seite 238. Wem schenkst du das alles? Remember, schenken is to give as a gift. So, to give is geben, but in German we like to be more specific. If you give it as a gift, where you don't want it in return, again, and schenken, nicht geben, yeah? Let's go through the exercise together so that it, it's going to be easier for you to do your homework. And we're just going to, I'm going to read every question and every answer, but I'll give you a little bit of time to think about um, the answer on your own. So the example is already there. Wem schenkst du die Weingläser? Ich schenke sie meiner Mutter. So again, meiner Mutter, I'm giving them to my mother. Why is there an R in meiner Mutter? Because it's dative. And um, ich schenke sie, the Z there is, think about it, what is the Z in that sentence? Ich schenke sie meiner Mutter. I give them. Z refers to the uh, die Weingläser. Ich schenke sie. It's the pronoun. Ich schenke die Weingläser. Ich schenke sie meiner Mutter. So Z is not my mother. It's them, the Weingläser. Okay? So, let's go to Nummer 1. Machen wir das mal zusammen. Dasselbe nochmal. Wem schenkst du die Geldtasche? Wem schenkst du die Geldtasche? Die answer, think about it for a second. Ich schenke sie meinem Vater. Meinem, with the EM ending, because it's dative. Ich schenke sie meinem Vater. Sie, again, refers to die Geldtasche. So in this case, Z does not mean them, because it doesn't refer to a plural noun, it means it. Ich schenke Z, I give it, the, the little wallet, to my father. Ich schenke Z meinem Vater. Und dann Nummer zwei, wem schenkst du das Armband? Wem schenkst du das Armband? Ich schenke es meiner Schwester. 
Ich schenke es, es because it's neutral, das Armband. So it's not sie, that's for die Geldtasche, feminine. Ich schenke es, das Armband, meiner Schwester. Meiner ending in er because it's dative, to my sister. Okay, und Nummer drei. Wem schenkst du die zwei Armbanduhren oder die zwei Uhren? Ganz einfach. Wem schenkst du die zwei Uhren? Think about the right endings for a second. Ich schenke sie meinen beiden Brüdern. Remember plural? Risi, Nisi, Mermen, N for dative plural. Um, ich schenke sie meinen beiden Brüdern. And Z here again means them, because it refers to the two watches. So, Z in this case is plural, them. Ich schenke sie, die zwei Uhren, meinen beiden Brüdern. Und Nummer vier. Wem schenkst du den Teekessel? Pay attention there. Wem schenkst du den Teekessel? It's not der Teekessel, it's den Teekessel, because it's accusative. That's our object we're giving away. So, wem schenkst du, that's your... Subject, you're giving something away. So du, subject, den Teekessel, accusative direct object. And so that's why in the answer there we have, ich schenke ihn meiner Großmutter. Ich schenke ihn den Teekessel meiner Großmutter. As you can tell, you'll need to review the accusative pronouns, obviously. And so as part of your accusative review also, the accusative pronouns, which we can see here. Ich schenke ihn, ihn refers to den Teekessel meiner Großmutter. Wem schenkst du, Nummer 5, wem schenkst du das Parfüm? Ich schenke es meiner Cousine, because it's a female cousin, meiner Cousine. Wem schenkst du die Krawatte? Ich schenke sie meinem Onkel. Wem schenkst du um, die Gießkanne? Ich schenke sie meiner Tante. Und dann Plural, last time with the Plural. Wem schenkst du die zwei Tennisschläger? Ich schenke sie meinen, remember I hate that word Fettern, we crossed it out of our books, that's circa 1902 is when that word was last used in a serious context. What is the word we're going to use? Ich schenke sie meinen beiden Cousins, nicht Vettern, Cousins. And let's throw in another masculine just to review the uh, masculine pronoun. Wem schenkst du, what could I give away as a gift that's something masculine? Wem schenkst du den, no, Krawatte is not masculine, die Krawatte is feminine. Uh, wem schenkst du den Computer? An expensive gift, but still. Wem schenkst du den Computer? Ich schenke ihn, see, den Computer, ihn. Ich schenke ihn meinem Mann. Ja? Ich schenke ihn meinem Mann. Ich schenke den Computer. Ja? Okay, something else you might have noticed here in this exercise is, then, is that when we started explaining the dative, just a page ago, I said, oh, the, if you look back to exercise 13, sie schickt ihrem Großvater ein gutes Buch. We said, indirect object first, sie schenkt ihrem Großvater, and then the direct object, ein gutes Buch. What happens here? Hmm, ich schenke sie meinem Vater, die Geldtasche. Ich schenke es meiner Schwester. Das Armband. When you use a pronoun for the direct object, for the accusative, then the word order reverses. So now you have first the direct object and then the indirect object. But only when the direct object is a pronoun because we need more confusion. And so the German language is going to help us out, give us more confusion. So remember, if you use the direct object, indirect object, both as nouns, it would be the other way around. Ich schenke meinem Vater eine Geldtasche. Ich schenke meiner Schwester 
ein Armband, das Armband. But when the direct object becomes a pronoun, it, them, then you switch it around. Ich schenke sie meinem Vater, die Geldtasche. Ich schenke es meiner Schwester, das Armband. Keep that in mind. When the direct object is a pronoun, it goes first. Otherwise, it's always going to be indirect object, direct object. Good? Okay. So just a minute ago, or less now that's been edited, just 10 seconds ago, <laughs> we were talking about the pronouns. And I told you you have to review them, the ones we already know at least, the nominative, the accusative pronouns, because we're adding on the dative pronouns. That's another difference between German and English. You guys have um, the uh, nominative or subject pronouns, I, you, he, she, we, da da da. And you have the object pronouns, where I turns into me, and he turns into him, she turns into her. But that's it, you have two sets of pronouns. In German, we have three. Because, again, we have the ones for the nominative, the subject case. Then we have the, the ones we studied before. I think, I'm pretty sure it's chapter five or four. You guys might want to review that. Um, the ones we studied in, um, it was chapter five. I was right. So the ones we studied last semester in chapter five, the accusative pronouns for the direct object. They're the ones that we just saw in that exercise we went through together. And then we're adding on the dative pronouns for the indirect object. So let's go back to that exercise. Um, Aufgabe 16, wem schenkst du das alles? If you look at the first question, wem schenkst du die Geldtasche? Ich schenke sie meinem Vater. Ich schenke sie it, die Geldtasche, meinem Vater. Okay, so we have the pronoun that replaces die Geldtasche. Ich schenke sie meinem Vater. But what if I asked you, was schenkst du deinem Vater? Now we already know you're giving something to your dad. So we can replace your dad with a pronoun, but we don't know what it is. So we cannot replace the direct object with a pronoun. Was schenkst du deinem Vater? Then you would answer, ich schenke ihm eine Geldtasche. So here you would use the dative pronoun and then the noun for the accusative. Okay, ich schenke ihm eine Geldtasche. I give him. Uh, the, the wallet. Him is the pronoun this time, not uh, the wallet. Him. Ich schenke ihm die Geldtasche. Now pay attention. Ihn is accusative, in ending. Ihm is dative. Yeah? Ich schenke ihm die Geldtasche. Look at your second um, question. Um, wem schenkst du das Armband? Wem schenkst du das Armband? Ich schenke is meiner Schwester. Is it, but it for something that's neutral. So it's not sie, it's is. No? Das Armband is. Ich schenke is uh, meiner Schwester, my sister. But if you ask, was schenkst du deiner Schwester, then the answer would be, ich schenke, think about it, ich schenke ihr das Armband. Her. No? Ich schenke ihr das Armband. Again, in English, the object pronoun is always her. But in German, remember, in accusative, it's sie. And it's ihr in the dative. No? Look at um, number three. Yeah. Wem schenkst du die zwei Uhren? Wem schenkst du die Uhren? Ich schenke sie meinen beiden Brüdern. Meinen Brüdern. Now this time, it's not this sie. It's not uh, singular, it's plural, them, the two watches. Ich schenke sie meinen Brüdern. Again, if you asked, was schenkst du deinen Brüdern? What are you giving your brothers? Ich schenke ihnen die zwei Armbanduhren, ja? Ihnen, them. Again, them and them is different in German for accusative and dative. 
Ich schenke sie, the watches, direct object, schenke sie meinen Brüdern, aber ich schenke ihnen, my brothers, die zwei Uhren. Okay? Good. And then let's look at one with a masculine uh, direct object, the little teapot, because, you know, we like to give teapots away. Um, Special occasions. <laughs> Why? I don't know. <laughs> but wem schenkst du den Teekessel? Ich schenke ihn, uh, meiner Großmutter. Yeah? Ihn, again, it's not because it's a person, a male person, it's just a teapot. It. But der Teekessel is masculine, so ich schenke ihn, meiner Großmutter. Was schenkst du deiner Großmutter? Ich schenke ihr den Teekessel. Gut? Okay, and before I let you go, obviously you'll have homework, so check your emails, your campus crews, or wherever I put your homework. I haven't decided yet at the time of recording, but before I let you go, notice how I circled the first three, the singular pronouns. It's because they're the hardest ones to remember. The plural, actually, as you can see here, there's no big difference uh, between um, the accusative and the dative. Uns stays the same. Great. Euch stays the same, which is a good thing because most students have a problem using euch in general. So this part is going to be a little easier to study. Z is the same in the nominative and accusative, only changes in dative. All right? So here, maybe you'll have less problems, but as you can tell, in the singular, they always change. Ich to mich and then mir. So ich komme heute. Okay, I'm coming to your place today. But ruf mich an. Call me, ruf mich an. Direct object. But give me the Hausaufgabe. Give me the homework because it's to me. Give it to me. Gib mir die Hausaufgabe, dative. Uh, du bringst die Hausaufgaben. You're bringing the homework. But, um, ich besuche dich. I'm coming to visit you. No? Ich besuche dich. Und ich gebe dir Hausaufgaben. I give you more homework. Ich gebe dir Hausaufgaben. Uh, so these are a little more difficult to, to study and to remember. Focus on these. The plural, a little tiny bit easier just because uns ist uns and euch ist euch. But then again, sometimes this one can be confusing just because you forget that there's a you singular and a you plural. So if I'm just talking to you, the one person watching me now, I would say, ich gebe dir Hausaufgaben. But if I had a whole class here, as we usually do, then it would be, you all, ich gebe euch Hausaufgaben, no? not just dir. Euch, all of you. So remember that we have the you singular and you plural. All right, so check your homework and be prepared to uh, take a quiz on this and work on exercises with the dative when we see each other in class. Tschüss.